And then I would just mute anything right now. So see where it says mute. Yeah.
in this area over right here, you best to see you. Probably right over. Yeah, you sit right there. Right over here. Yeah, wherever you like. Yeah. No, that's too far away. <laughs> Kimberly, can you hear me? Hello? Oh, yeah. Hi, Kimberly. Can't hear you. So the thing is, is that sometimes people come in here and they shut the speakers off. Paul, you hear me? What? I see you, Paul. Thank you. Did he hear you? I can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, all right. So there are speakers right here. All I did was bring them up. Okay. okay. All right, you should be all good to go. And it's recording. Okay. What are we doing today? Hunting gear room. You got your hunting gear room. Lenny just stepped out, so they will begin the meeting and do the introductions. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Huh? You already have that? I don't have it on the Well, there you go. Well, good. We're five minutes after four, so we've got everybody here who's supposed to be here, along with our guest, uh, Jason Stevens. So the roll call is we have Lenny, Mike, Paul, Kimberly, and myself, and Jason Stevens is a guest. And uh, our first order of business was, uh, and we thank you very much for. Hello. Yes, I want me to put admit again for you or. Okay, let me uh, let me just hit admit again. All right. Can you? Yeah. I can hear you by the phone. But I. Kimball? Yeah. Her name's up there. I just appeared. Yeah, I I could hear you pretty. Can you hear me? Pretty good. I'm, I'm, you're on my cell phone now. Just connecting to audio. Yeah. Anyway. What were you saying, Mike? I'm just reading this. It said it says she was connecting to audio. Yeah. <laughs> Try speaking, and I'll just see if you come through on the uh, screen here, Kimberly. Oh, here. No, she. We'll just use the phone, okay? No problem. There, I'll, I'll just leave you on speaker. That's great, thank you. I can hear you good. Well, great. thank you all for uh, coming today. Today, our first order of business is a discussion with uh, Jason Stevens on the town's use. Basically, we're, we're looking at good conservation practices for bread sediment from getting in the lakes or rivers, streams. And, and what are some of the policies, the techniques you use? materials uh and maybe we'll have a few questions for you but we're just trying to get an overview of you know, what it is yep. and uh kind of like i talked to jason a few minutes before everybody came in and gave him a kind of rundown of what we might thinking the first part was what is the the role responsibilities some of their priorities and how to, what kind of crews do you man so maybe if you could just start with that piece now we could field some questions and then go into some more of the the priorities and techniques and for erosion control. For yep. So um, we do a lot of cleanup of the winter sand. Um, Excuse me. Is the town manager going to be here? She is uh, unfortunately recovering from uh, an illness. Okay. She's in the hospital. So she, she okay. emailed Sorry. me. She hoped to get out, but she couldn't get out. Sorry, yeah. it's wrong. It's okay. What happened? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Can yeah, is Jason us? talking? Yes. I didn't I can't hear him. So yeah, we basically clean up the ditches, um, clean up the winter sand, uh, replace culverts, use hay and seed to uh, Back in the ditches, and also with a parallax hay straw. Oh, Let me see if Paul. Paul, can you can you hear that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, parallax seems to be the best solution rate. Yeah, it seems to work really well. Okay. What, what is that? It's um, like a four foot wide hay netting. Okay. And you staple it in the ditches. 
hay for one thing, hay is getting hard to get because farmers couldn't hay much this year, and the price of hay has gone from two and three dollars a bale to six bucks a bale. So still use hay, but not as much. So yeah. And also riprap around the ends of culverts, riprap wherever. Um, plunge pools are good near culverts where you can put them to help collect any sediment. So if there's an area where we can, if we switch to replace a culvert, we can put a plunge pool in so it can okay. collect any winter sand. Winter sand is 99.9% .9 of the erosion because we put 5,000 yards of winter sand on the roads every year. That's a lot of sand. It is. And it gets in the ditches and it gets in the stream. Because so it's it, it gets clean those plunge pools out. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. What does it do? Kind of, you know, from the in the spring wash in, it gets into the ditches and all. Yeah, the... it like runs just the sand runs off the road. Whatever runs off the road, it tries, you know, gets in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's thing you can do to try to catch it. Basically, is just to have maintain ditches areas where, like where it can where yeah. it can fly out into the uh, yeah away from the water. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because when you put that much sand on the roads throughout the course of the winter, you know, it's hard to keep it out of the streams, <laughs> really. It is. It's like a... Yeah. You look at the size of that salt shed and how big it is. It's very palm full. should be empty. Yeah. yeah. Is, the, is the sand in you use in, in, in lieu of salt, you know, that you see? They mix it three to one. So three yards of sand to one yard of salt. So right now there's 5,000 yards roughly of sand and then about 1,000 yards of salt that'll get used. And they probably that's run out. That's quite a bit of material, isn't it? It is, it's a lot. You don't realize how much that is until you get inside that building. You can back a trailer truck in there, load it, and dump the whole body without even when it's out. Yeah. In your course of, you know, kind of looking through it in the spring, do you, do you see a lot of that impact if the sand is overwhelming the erosion control? Certain areas, yeah. You'll get a berm of sand on the side of the road where, you know, especially intersections, we try to clean the intersections in yeah. the spring of the year. And uh, depending on the year and how much salt and sand, you know, this it puts out a lot. They put out a lot, you know. Do you have a, can you kind of quantify if there's any hot spots like, you know, that are getting into the lake or streams or call? You know that are really parentally difficult to manage because of their, however they were, you know, uh, built or the amount yeah. of sand going on. Yeah. Um, and hot spots. I mean, yeah. all of them. Pretty, I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So there's not much. Given the need to not have a slip, icy roads. There's not much. And hills are where they sand the most, and that's where you get the most erosion. Yeah, goes right down. Yeah. Is anybody still using brine? I don't know. I don't think they are now. State because you can. Yeah, I don't know. We never used it. We tried it on 135 over that way just a little bit. Yeah. It deteriorates road quicker, I guess. It's one or the other. I mean, you put more chemicals in the water versus more sand. I don't know what's better. <laughs> you go back to gravel. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's not much, not much alternatives to sand then, or re realistic. For the but, main roads. Yeah. You know, I mean, all the towns use it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I know my on Foster uh, Lane where I am, we have to sand that road all the time, or you'd be ice yeah. skating across it. Yeah. Uh, are there any things that we could do as a town to improve, you know, the, uh, you know, the quality of the ditches or where they're making a more erosion control proof that you, any budget items that you know, like a wish list, if you could have this, would, we could make a significant impact on, on some of these areas. Is there any? Anything that we could be doing that um, we can't right now because of money? No, I mean the budget's pretty good. It's um, it's 
it's more of just keeping up and just putting, you know, more punch pools in. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of just getting them, getting it done. Yeah. Usually when we do a paving, like we did um, Hewland Street, yeah. there's a lot of work on that with catch basins, a lot on that. And we did a lot on the Gupta Road. When we do a major project right there, we you know, kind of going straight through all the ditches and all that like stuff. Like, you know, you didn't Lakeshore Drive down here with Bird. You know, you had that, but yeah. it did change it. To... <laughs> now, last, last year and, and a couple of years before that, on the Guapon Road, you didn't do anything like that. So, right. what was the problem there? Well, I think it was this year, uh, my guys went down, they cleaned up the shoulders of the road, and they were late getting the hay out because they couldn't get the hay. So it was like a couple of days, two, three days later. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. But that. yeah, there wasn't like the, um, I don't recall the name of the material you mentioned, but they didn't put down, it was, it was just basically some hay sort of thrown down willy nilly. Yeah. You know, without anything underneath it. And there was no seating or anything. And okay. it was just kind of a right. half hearted effort. Yeah. I wasn't thing. involved. Well, I was going at that point, but yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I know that. I remember that happening. Yeah, yeah. So, and then a few years before, a couple of years before that, I mean, I, it may have been your first or second year as commissioner. And then further up in Guapon Road, not too far from Oakland, um, there was some ditching done that was never covered at all. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I mean that. Right. Yeah. So anyway, just yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, we, we try to, I mean, I try to make sure they stay on top of it. We stay on top of it because I'm not there all the time. So, yeah, I, yeah, got to push, bring the hay right with you. So that way, then the girl likes so now. Yeah. And so, so do I understand that it, what you're doing is, I mean, the, the best practice, practice as you described it is you put down that, that product that the, the mesh, Put seed down first. Seed, seed first, right. Seed first, then that, and then if that, like say it's four feet wide, yeah. if there's anything on the sides, like if it is uh, more of a slope, you're going to blow hay on that or yeah, sure. blow hay on it. Because right. yeah. You that's can't right. get it way up. Yeah, yeah that sounds great. Right. Yeah. So that's what you do now pretty much yeah. exclusively. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen in some of the real steep areas, like you mentioned on Lakeshore Drive, you put you know the riprap in, and yeah, you know, kind riprap of riprap is really good, but it's that's uh, more money. Yeah, oh, yeah. some places you don't really. I think they say is it um, Charlie Beta? He's got a thing yeah. on his phone. He sets his phone on the ground. If it's such a slope, I can't remember the percentage. Of yeah. And they tell us we were right there. You should use riprap or what you should use. Oh, really? Yeah. And they said it's only on the camper. Yeah. We were working on the camper. They said right there. said, well, the soap isn't enough for riprap, but that'll work. Yeah, they've got it in this, this stuff. Yeah. You know, that. yeah. Stuff they sent around me. Yeah. Right. Know, the three to one slope is supposed to, there's a certain. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I was just interested in, I don't know what technology that would be in his phone. That his phone would be able to get the. Yeah, I guess it's where you put your phone on the grade. Yeah, I didn't know that the phone was sensitive enough enough to pick up an actual. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe you had the app. Yeah. Well, but well, I, right. I understand you need the app, but I didn't know that the phone had the, the sensor in it that was more than just you know one position or the other versus right. just the yeah. actual. You have to use how many degrees? You have to use the flip phone. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can try flipping it and see. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of in. In preparation for the, sometimes for the at the spring thaw when probably this mostly gets a big problem or, yeah. or big storms. Do you, yeah. do you have like before you you know begin the season to, like site visits of trouble spots or yeah. you know where, where you hey this is yeah. a, typically a problem we got to come yeah. back and look at this one again and yeah yeah there's certain areas that get blowouts yeah because of like last year I get the three or four inch rainstorms. And our roads are flooded, and people, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of early rain, a lot of rain. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we held up good. Both, we didn't actually, because I know a lot of towns had Kelvits that couldn't handle it. All that Kelvits were right to the top. I mean, but they handled it. We didn't have no big road washouts or yeah. anything. So, um, so that was good. So, 
We didn't lose any roads yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Is kind of a kind of maybe is there any other technical questions we want to run by? But I think is there anything the town could do to uh, again kind of going back to the mummy you know, money and priorities right. that would it, it allow your crew to improve on things or right. or, or is it the situation it's right. going to be changed every year based on the weather and um so I deal with Charlie Bader quite a bit yeah. and he like when it comes close to like say something that dumps pretty close to the lake if he gets involved he sometimes can fund to help the town yeah. and if he you know he has the deal with a lot of he has ideas about bunch pools rip rafting or whatever that's yeah. helpful um, I know I talked to them because we're going to be paving the Hustle Point Road within the next couple of years, and there's a few colors that need to be changed, yeah. and he was looking to get involved in that and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, that's helpful. So That's good, yeah. Any more, you know, engineering, well, not really. Engineering or looking at it or ideas or, you know, always helps. Yeah. I think Charlie's retiring soon, so unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Is, is Stuart Cole? Taking, Stuart, yeah, Stuart yeah. will be kind of is, is jumping in, so. Yeah. so I think that's a good relationship to have some other, you know, right. people with some. Right. Because so, so Jason, how does this work? You're gonna give us an example. You're gonna pave Horse Point Road, and do you have specific? Who makes up the specifications to the, the drainage? Is this just as it goes along, or is it any engineering done on this? Well, that's it. Usually. Basically, if there's no problems on the road, we just maintain what's there. I mean, is there any flooding or anything in the, you know that's happened in the past that the road needs to be changed? Um, if not, we just you know replace all the culverts that are there. Um, and, and I mean, unless there's a big issue on the road, we usually don't engineer anything. And you know. If the road's yeah. handling the water, everything just needs to be upgraded, basically, unless it's something that needs to be changed, you know. Bigger culvert or something. Like right. That. If there's something that's visible that's happened over the years and the road can't handle it, we need to upgrade in a certain area or do whatever. Or... But... So, you're, so you're making that determination? Yeah, that's the way it's always been, Morris, pretty much every. But that's why I said if Charlie gets involved and sees something that I don't see right. or has it, recommendation on water crossing or whatever or something and something on like flat ground that's pretty doesn't take much water but where it comes into a watershed or a big area yeah um, where you get a lot because horse point is kind of low you know that in a certain area that yeah. flood area in the middle of it right, right. they lifted that probably eight or ten years ago yeah. that area of ground was it's up higher now so yeah. it's it's not as bad as it right. it used to be so how does best management practices come in to, to your head, Jason? How does that work? Um, you mean far as like management as is what? I mean, what, what do you mean? You use it as a guideline. So, you use it as a guideline when you're making decisions. Yeah. So I basically go with um, what I've had seen in the past for like erosion or um, any problems when we have three or four inch storms or you know anything i can change or fix so you kind of been there long enough you see them as they come and changes right because like this year we had like three or four inch rainstorms and whatever areas were bothering i mean what was the reason why did it bother Pelvin not big enough is the ditches not holding the water or you know do you get a lot of input from the residents in an area hey we got a problem here like yeah, after those yeah. storms, I mean, yeah, I mean, fire is like a beaver plugging the culverts or something, or a tree in the ditch, or yeah, on my drive, you know, different things. Yeah, it's always helpful because I can't be all 40 miles of the road all at once, obviously. Yeah, so uh, it, it's good to see you have some uh, relationship with you know, Seven Lakes people who are right. You may not know how to drive the equipment, but they know the techniques. They know the, you know, the, some of the best practices, and yeah. and can help with uh, 
Yeah, well, how do can, we know they know what the number is? For sure. I mean, we yeah. you've got to pass all kinds of tests and things. But what do we do about? Uh, I don't mean to be throwing rock at Charlie. He's been around a long time. How are we? How are we to be reassured that they know what they're talking about? It's a good question. Maybe it's something we should think about. Yeah. How's that? Because Charlie was a you know a long-standing. Yeah, but they're changing now. Right? Yeah. When's Charlie retiring? Well, he's pretty much retired now. Yeah. He still works a little bit part time, but I doubt he'll do much over the winter. Uh, well, I presumably be back in the spring. Part, you know, I don't know what percentage to be seen. But he, yeah, he pretty much wants to retire. I'll, I'll check with, I'll check with the uh, Stewart. And see what his background is in training, and and uh, you know it might be something we good to know. Good to know, and I I know Seven Lakes has held, you know, um, you know, training for, you know, for this for, uh, you know, road maintenance, you know, for the like the whole area, you know, towns yeah. in the area to come by. Right. Uh, but a lot of DOT was doing a lot of the training sometimes. They a lot of the training, I've gone through several of them. And they're pretty good. Yeah. We put up with the new guys. It might be good just to follow up to that. Anything else you want? Think we need to know or re you'd re any recommendations? For... No. So there's nothing. You know, we could, I suppose, ask if you need more money for a budget. What? What do you do? Well. Um... They do have a fund uh, that we can pull out of, I believe, an extra um, money for the town of Mary knows. <laughs> I don't know. In my budget, yeah. isn't there an extra fund for the road if I needed it, if I run over? Well, you have a ton of money in your reserve. reserve account. Anyway, right. the public works road reserve account, there's a ton of money there. So, right. yeah, I mean, if you went 20 or 30,000 or more over, you'd be fine. So, right. They need to, you need to go to the board to get it. It does. You do need to go to the board yeah. for any special it usually like that. Board. But it, it's put in there for that purpose. Right. So and usually on a paving year, there's more money. We need more. I need more money to get the roads prepped for paving. There's usually a lot more work to do to prep for the paving because I try to get the roads all ditch ready, make sure all the culvert's good, make sure everything's good. So when they pave, we ain't going to get back on them for a long yeah. time. Make sure the brush is all cut back, make sure everything looks good, and then they pay that road's good for X amount of years, whatever, yeah. eight, ten years, or whatever. It comes so back. That's usually usually when we need the more post money. We're getting ready to head out. I'm gonna run my reporting. You all set then? Yeah, we're all set. Okay. All right. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you. Bye there. Another question I had, and this I don't know. I'm the seasonal member, Jason, so I don't know. What's, is there a change in the snow plowing this winter as who's plowing in town? Next year. Next, Next year. Not this season, the following season. Okay. Correct. Okay. So is that, is that put out to bid or just? Yeah. yeah. Three year bid, yeah. three year contract. Yeah. Yeah. Because I imagine you have a working relationship with the present situation that you know how they're going to plow and what the. But I was just thinking in the future, you're going to have to deal with someone right. you don't know. Um, I do deal with them some, but they, so the ones that are doing it right now, they've done it for at least 25 years. Right. So if they learn how to do it now, they'll never learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't have to tell them what to do. Yeah. <laughs> you do pretty right. Yeah. 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 And I think that is the new guys are, are going to work with the, the old this, guys yeah. this year so that they can transition in and, and learn yeah. you know, how to do it. It's good that they did that that way. So yeah. It gets to... Yeah. It'll repent. We have the new guys chosen yet? Yeah. 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 And, yes. And they are going to work. They're actually they are actually going to work with the old guys this year. Okay. They're actually going to do some plowing along with the old guys this year so that they can learn how to do it. Yeah. Who's the new contract? Um, Brooke Cummins from Sydney. Yeah. Well, he does a lot of residential and stuff. Uh, I know him well. Um, he's a good guy. He has a construction business. Um, he, put that all he will have if he doesn't have. Um, that's, 
why he they did it a year in advance so he can like you said ride with them or help plow with them and make sure he gets everything set up so yeah it isn't like you know this spring you say well now you need you this fall so he's like oh he was a little bit hands-on yeah. uh, kind of an aside on this i at the last at last year's town meeting there was a long discussion on belgrade maybe having a public works building yeah is that is that something that I think we, you know, it would help, you know, have equipment, you know, a bigger budget item would have maybe some of these, uh, you know, best practices equipment kind of lined up there so they could be uh, used as an emergency or right. when we need it. I think it's something that you got to kind of work their way into, you know, yeah. not just like expect one year to buy all the equipment yeah. and get it all set up. I think they need to get a piece of property for the garage and for the figure it out maintenance and then they need to you know slowly you know i mean they could take some of my break off some of my stuff that i do you know say the mowing the side of the road or if they get you know whatever they get it for equipment or yeah. for workers they can slowly take some yeah. of mine and definitely yeah. you know and um work their way into it instead of just trying to yeah. take the whole thing all at once they kind yeah. of like what they're doing so far maybe work their way into it yeah um, yeah, I didn't get the feel they were in a big hurry to right. take it on. They were worried because of snow plowing. They were worried about just snow plowing because... Well, I mean, that was going to happen if they couldn't find anybody to do the snow plowing. That's here. right. You're talking about doing right. actually having a public works department in that right. right building. But since they didn't, didn't have folks to, to do the snow plowing... That's they, they all... could have got the help to plow snow. Yeah. Because yeah. they just can't take anybody off the street and have them plow snow. No. So, yeah. right. So they were kind of hoping to do it if they had to do it. Yeah. yeah so that's now no longer Good. in the mix. It yeah. may come up again if, I think if the plowing is Jack... an issue again, but so far it's not. Any more uh, questions for uh, Jason? Any more questions, you guys? Paul, Kimberly? I'm, I'm okay. Thank you, though. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. And keep up the good work, Jason. Yeah. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. We appreciate it. You plan to be with us for a while? Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping that um, hoping that we can stay doing this. I don't wouldn't mind if they started picking up some of it. The town. You know, I mean, like the Corey and their crew. Yeah. They could pick up some of just to ease some of it off of me. Um, some of the smaller stuff, and, you know, uh, there's, there's no lack of work for yeah. me. So, but I, I like to work for the town. I guess if I can, if the town started doing a little bit of it, it would be, wouldn't hurt my feelings. Yeah. So. Something to think about, actually. Yeah. Yeah. As, as yeah, things I, go, yeah. Something personal can be suggested. Yeah. I mean, because I even do like fix stop signs, fix everything, or like a tree down in the road, and everything, which is all good. But I mean, sometimes it's stuff that they can do. Yeah, they had it. Right, and work their way into doing a little bit yeah. more and a little bit more. Um, so, thank you for coming. Thank yep. you for coming. Thank you very much. Yep. Welcome. See you guys later. Yeah, thank you. French check. Learned a little bit here. Any thoughts? Uh, any thoughts from Paul, Kimberly? No. Well, I, I guess the only question is that we wanted him to deal. How is the relationship between? How much he uses best management practices, but you know, I, I know Jason; he's pretty on the job savvy. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. A lot of these guys, Jason being one of them, yeah, they've been doing it so long that he's yeah. got instinct a lot. Yeah, and they see it; they know what's going to be a problem. They got historical knowledge of you know what a three-inch rain is going to do to this spot or that spot. Or I think he, I think he's quite obvious that he he realizes the the danger of doing yeah. it wrong. Causing undue erosion problems. Yeah. 
and uh, whether he can cite the rules or not is yeah. he's doing what the rules call for. Yeah. And I think it's really great that we have the one year overlap between the um, current, I think it's the Warren brothers that are currently handling the plowing and the yeah. others that's coming on. I think that was really smart of the town to arrange or whoever arranged that. Well, <laughs> what happened is that the Warren brothers had let the town know uh, a while ago that, that this coming winter was going to be their last winter plowing, that they were not going to renew, renew the contract. So um, uh, the select board or whoever uh, had the select board's direction uh, got busy trying to, to, to line up someone else. And at that point, they had a lot of difficulty finding anyone. And so at that point, so then there was actually a committee formed uh, to try and figure out what to do and how to do it, which included beating the bushes further for finding someone to do it. And that's when they turned up uh, these folks in Sydney. Um, right. And they also you know, put it out to bid. There were, they did get several different bids and these folks in Sydney had by far the lowest bid. And it turned out they were well known in town as Jason, for example, said, and had a good reputation. So it was kind of a no brainer to go with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, it, it was done early because we realized that if if uh, if we couldn't find someone, then we actually were going to have to set up a public works department and do it ourselves, and that was not anything we could do on on short notice. That's so great. yeah, it'll be very expensive. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, big right. jump in yeah. management costs. Yeah, right. Nobody I mean, nobody wanted to do that. There was nobody actually in favor of doing that. But on the other hand. Everyone, uh, well, I shouldn't say everyone, but most people recognized that it might actually be necessary if we couldn't find mm -hmm. something. But we did. So, okay. so we're good for at least three years, we yeah. believe. We have we have a three year contract, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. Assuming he does a good job. Yeah. 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 There's every reason to believe he'll do a good job. Yes, good chance. Any more on the. Uh... Our road discussion. Well, does, okay. this lead, does this lead into the issue of whether that the town eventually is going to need a DPW as the town grows? Is this something that is there in any of the planning thinking? Well, you know, the, 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 the town, what do you mean by the town growing? There's, there's so many places you can put roads and they're all there now. If they build them in subdivisions, it's up to the uh, developer to take care of it. So really, we're talking about the same rows. The same. It's actually fifty-three miles of rows. I think he said. Probably. Paul, Paul uh, Kimberly, and I are on the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee, and last this this month, we the topic was, you know, growth, and you know, we're you know, for, based on the last census, and we're see, we're not seeing a great deal of growth population wise, you know, okay. in the last. Year. So it's not like it's not. I don't think we have the same thing at Southern Maine and other parts of Maine have where, the, you know, they've got tremendous influx of, of uh, you know, new people, you know, from moved up from other parts of the country, yeah. working and. But uh, but I, I think Paul's right in the sense that I think that 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 I think that's going to change in future. Yeah. Maybe not in the next five or ten years, but if you look out twenty five years from now, I'll bet you. It'll be different. We're, it's going to be different, and uh, we you know. Whether or not we're going to ultimately need to have a public works department is hard to say. A lot of towns do have them. Oakland, for example, has it. Of course, Oakland's a good bit larger than we are. For the time being, at least, we don't need one. We'll see. Yeah, for just in my memory, I remember 30 years ago getting off the turnpike at the coming on I 95, getting off in Augusta, and there was one red light between Augusta. And Belgrade, yeah. and now it's the whole like to your point, like it's all different now. Yeah, true. So, so we'll, see. we'll have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, well, and as well, my my point actually, which may be yours also, is that as 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 climate change really kicks in, as it's showing every sign of doing, uh, as I say, twenty five years from now, and when it's a whole lot warmer, uh, you know, down down below the Mason Dixon line. 
uh, and everywhere. It'll be warmer here. Yeah. Uh, people will be starting to move north a lot, and I think yeah. it'll fill in here pretty quickly. Yeah. We'll see. Now, if we're around, we'll see that. Yeah. say about 110 and 25 years, so I'm not going to worry too much <laughs> about it. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, of course, I'm not saying that you know, any of us will be here in 25 years, but. <laughs> But I mean, the thing is, it, in my mind, it, you, 25 years from now is a long time. It's, it's unlikely in my mind to see the kind of growth that would require a, a, a public works department. Yeah. You know, unless unless we're just going to build all our roads ourselves and do other things. But as far as plowing goes, yeah. it's 53 miles a row, whatever it is, and that's it. That right. shouldn't change because uh, new ones will be a subdivision responsibility for their maintenance. Yeah. And it's anything that's uh, anything that's new, you know, will be the responsibility of the developer yeah. or the residents, like my room. Yeah, the residents, maybe. Same, right, same where I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. So, anyways, yep. good. Well, Lenny, you want to. Uh, okay, well, we want to talk about Salmon Lake. Yes, I think Salmon Lake turning green. Um, well, if you've uh, read the materials, uh, there's, I'm not sure what, what, what there is to say. It, it, um, the second one, that, the one that's sent for the fall newsletter, kind of gives you, a, in just a sentence or two, gives you the, the history insofar as I know it. I, I would, by the way, the, the one that the article, the short article by Daniel Wayne, it's, you know, why is Seven Lake turning green earlier? Uh, that's really it's her byline, but it was really written by both of us. Um, she sent it, sent an article, and then I added a lot to it, and, and such, including the stuff about uh, the, the history. Um, uh, so, it, my understanding is that this is uh, the the water quality problems in Salmon Lake are pretty much entirely a result of. Or largely, you know, there are, there are other issues, just like there are in all the other, all of the other Belgrade lakes and yeah. all of the developed lakes everywhere. There are runoff issues all around the lakes, but the, the big one that caused the serious water quality problems in Salmon Lake was the dairy farm uh, that is uh, that has been out of business now since the '80s, late '80s. Um, and uh, currently, there's a uh, there's a sort of animal, uh, little animal, not a farm, but uh, husbandry operation on that site, run by the, the vet, the veterinarian who has New England Animal Hospital down in downtown Waterville area, just off of West Western Avenue there, on Pleasant Street, a Russ something. I can't remember his last Russell Danner. Russell Danner, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, but it, uh, that's it's. If you don't, you don't know where I'm talking about, it's in fact just uh, just slightly to the north and directly behind the North Belgrade Community Center. Uh, in fact, that that property of the community center was carved out of the old farm. Um, my understanding is it was actually given to the town by the people who own the farm. Um, so. Uh, but for decades and decades, uh, their cows, uh, you know, did what cows do on that farmland, which slopes down towards the road, uh, at least a good portion of it does. And there's a lot of runoff uh, onto the, to the road, the stream runs along beside the road, crosses under the road there, uh, not far uh, to the south of the, of the, uh, of the farm and then just runs right into the lake, just straight shot into the lake from there. So all the sediment that's in the bottom of Salmon Lake, most of it has come from, from those cows. And beginning in the 1960s and, and early 70s, the lake started to, to bloom pretty much on an annual basis. Um, and it does now every year, uh, at least, uh, uh, when the lake turns over um, in, in, in October, sometimes earlier. And in fact, uh, if you look at the, the graph here that was in the, the spring newsletter um, that was uh, done by the, the assistant uh, 
Yeah. Uh, by, by Lucy Gallagher, who's the assistant lake scientist with Danielle. Unfortunately, she has left, or is it? I'm not sure if she's actually left just yet or is leaving uh, because her, her gentleman friend, uh, who she calls her partner, uh, is starting graduate school at Dartmouth and she's decided she wants to be with him in New Hampshire. Um, anyway, uh, if you look at the graphs there uh, that are these three graphs here, this is on page 13. Uh, if you look at the graph on page 13, this is for this is the water quality update that, she, that she's giving in. This is the spring newsletter from this year. Uh, so it's the water quality update from last year. Of course, this you know this came out in like in May, so you know it was before the seasons. This is from last year's water quality. And if you look at that top graph, which is salmon, the bottom graph is McGraw. So yeah. talking about McGraw, which is a whole different situation. Um, water flows, by the way, the water flow in that Twin Lakes is from McGraw into salmon. So salmon uh, does not affect McGraw at all to the extent that there's any influence between the lakes. It's from McGraw to salmon. Um, but uh, if you just to tell you what you're looking at when you for, for the moment you can forget the colors we're not really thinking too much about the colors here that's water temperature uh, if you the, if you look at the left side of the graph that's depth in meters and um, and if you just go and if you look at the bottom that those that's the date from April through November in 22 or in, in into November 22. And that is the depth of the Secchi disk, which if, uh, does everybody know what a Secchi disk is and Secchi what the depth yeah. means? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can see it's uh, 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 basically from ice out until just, just before ice over. And so the Secchi disk readings were pretty darn decent in, you know, from May uh, into, uh, well, was, they were really good in July, you know, in June and July. Um, and, you know, they were down, they were somewhere in that, you know, six and a half, seven meter range, which is very nice. Uh, but then they start to deteriorate. And here you can actually see that beginning in September, uh, and this is in 22, uh, Whammo, uh, in early September. And, and I can remember, uh, in 22, sometime around the 20th of September, uh, all of a sudden, you know, the, the, well, the, the lake, you, know, you can see that the, the clarity of the lake decreased significantly during the month. And all of a sudden, sometime around the 20th of September last year, 22, not this past summer, uh, all of a sudden it just turned green, got a bam. Uh, and then it stayed that way all the way through. So that was actually pretty early. And I, um, earlier than usual. I um, don't know why, because the lake had not really turned over then yet either. Um, the norm is that with the turnover, which just is happening right about now, around the 1st of November, uh, that's when the big bloom normally would come. But in recent years, in recent years, it has been coming earlier and earlier just the way that this article, the second yeah. article, the, the, the ball article talks about it. Um, the big turnover, just, just to make a point that you may not be familiar with, um, uh, Salmon Lake is like, I think like Ray Pond and, and, the, and, and at least the northern part of Long Pond uh, is a, but what's known as, to use a little, um, Jargon is a bimictic lake. I have a terrible term. And that just means that it turns over twice a year. Uh, and the, that's what the bi is for. What, I have no idea where mictic comes from. Bimictic lake. Uh, it turns over in the fall and it turns over again in the spring. And otherwise, it is pretty much, under normal circumstances, it's pretty much stratified, uh, meaning that. Uh, you know, the, in the summer, which is what we're mostly concerned about, it means that there's warm water that stays up high and cold water that stays down low, and the two of them don't mix, at least not very much. Um, 
And the turnover, of course, is caused by the fact in the fall that well, you've got this really, the water's getting colder and colder up above. And finally, it gets cold enough that it actually sinks down far enough that it causes a mixing of everything. That is sometimes augmented, the mixing process is sometimes augmented by wind. So sometimes you can get kind of a stasis where nothing's really happening and then a nice wind will kick up on the lake and all of a sudden it will be just enough to get everything to start mixing up uh, uh, at once. Um, and then the same thing happens in the spring in reverse. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, that's the by mix point, huh? Are there numbers in 23 yet? No, 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 we haven't seen anything from 23 yet. Uh, it was a very windy year. So. Yeah, no, I, no, I haven't seen anything from 23. Uh, well, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I've, I've seen the, the, uh, the weekly or bi-weekly um, uh, secu-disc readings, but I haven't seen any graphs or anything like that. Um, so anyway, it's behaving the way it's behaving. It's... Fairly normal, and you know, I, I'm I'm not thoroughly convinced by um, by Danielle's argument in the in the in the fall newsletter about exactly what's going on. I don't think she really knows, but that's probably as good a guess as, as she can come up with. Um, let me just say one more thing, and then I'll shut up, and you can ask or mm -hmm. you can talk about whatever you want. And that is, the situation is. Bad, but not bad enough that people are getting all that concerned about it. And when I say that, what I mean is it's really, it's pretty bad, but it's bad late. Um, as I said, if you look at the graph there, water clarity is pretty darn good, uh, really right until you get till uh, early September. Yeah. And then it goes to hell. But by early September, most people are pretty much done with the lake. I mean, there's still a few people who like to continue using the lake in September, but not all that many. Most people, summer people are either gone on or off to other things. So there's not a huge constituency as there was, say, on East Pond and as there now is on North Pond to really do something about it and, you know, to throw money at it as, as they, they're going to do in North Pond and they already have done in East Pond. So um, as long as it doesn't start intruding further into the, you know, earlier and earlier uh, into the summer, uh, I think people are content to just let it be the way it is. Um, and that's why I actually asked Danielle to address the question in, in this article, which is, you know, why is it getting green earlier in the year? And is that going to continue? Will it get green earlier every year? Are we looking at a situation where it's just, as East Pond used to do, about midsummer, all of a sudden, it would just turn wow, boom, scuzzy green and stay that way. And she's saying, no, that's not going to happen, but I'm not convinced. Anyway, that, that's my story. And well, tell me if I, if I can't stick to it. Very good. And by the way, all that nice. Phosphorus and all that, you know, all that stuff that's up in the on the water column, it comes up, it all just washes right into Gray Pond for any of you who care about that other lake. A few of us do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it goes over the dam. Over and, the dam and into yeah, the and, and, stream. And, and, and downstream and into Gray Pond. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Train, train us on the lakes. I see, the, I see they're doing work on the dam too. Or that did work. Oh, they did. Well, that was last year. Yeah, yeah. they did last year. No, Working on this year. Now. Yeah. yeah, right. Last year. Yeah. You know, all the dams are owned by the town of Elgin. We got those dam people from that home in there. Yeah, they, they dropped it two feet in Great Bond. Yeah. It was a big, big rush to get your boat out in time to. to mm -hmm. So, yeah, we got our over to the marina. There was a foot and a half left, about 14 yeah. inches, actually. It was pretty scary. Yeah, it's scary. Oh, we're going to be stuck here. Uh, exactly. Uh, they repaired the dam on Mills, uh, Mills was the uh, end of Long Pond yeah. in the 70s. They drained the lake. I was living on Long Pond at the time. Went down to the natural bed. Yeah. Which is a little stream in the middle. Mm. Of it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I could walk out from my 
Probably about 150 feet into the water. Wow. Was it mucky? Or hard bottom, or that that area, that that particular area, a lot of sand. So yeah, not too bad. Get me. Where is yeah, this? Long Where time. Long last time. Weekend. Yeah, last weekend. <laughs> last weekend. <laughs> My God. Well, you and and I, you know, salmon. Uh, the the dam went in in salmon, in I believe 1908, and yeah. uh, and raised the level about eight feet, and apparently. Uh, uh, it uh, you know significantly increased the size of the lake certainly and salmon and McGraw used to be two separate lakes with just a stream in between yeah. so yeah they like to go back to their origins yeah oh yeah wasn't it the whole thing called Ellis Ellis Pond was yeah. it was it the whole thing or just salmon I, salmon used to be called Ellis I don't know if McGraw I didn't know both together was, it was called Ellis I, so. I, don't I don't know was McGraw a, a local uh, Person or family? I think yeah, yeah. McGraw was a local family yeah. up there. Along, uh, I think I think somewhere up where uh, Lou Lester lives, up in the north yeah. northwest corner. Oh, very good, Lenny. Thank you very much for. So, that. if there's any, if any, I have any questions or any observations or thoughts or what are you going to do about One question I have is how do you spell Dimitic or whatever it is? By Mictic. By Mictic. Hi, M I C T I C B I M B I. It's B I. I maybe put a hyphen in there. M I C T I C. Okay, great. Are, this is for the minutes. Oh, I, I understand. <laughs> well, nobody knows how to spell it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. That was our our agenda items for today, but I uh, kind of looking forward. What, Mike? Just going to suggest, uh, since we have a quorum today, you want to ratify what we did on the last meeting? Is there anything there that's hanging foul? I don't believe we so. Couldn't vote on it. Yeah. Anything, anything there that needs to come up and be voted on? If not, fine. Let's get out of here. Yeah. I just have just just one thing. What's you know kind of we we've had a few steps since we became the uh, Lakes Natural Resources Committee. And you now, where do we go next? Where are we going to focus? What types of things? Yes. You know, I think is something. Yeah, I don't. We need more than an hour or two, or or we need to brainstorm, kind of, uh, in a way to, you know, prioritize what you know where we what we should be looking at. Some some things will come out of the uh, the comprehend the new comprehensive plan yeah. as it's coming that. But uh, I always go back to the land. I've just noticed in the uh, Mid Coast Land Trust was advertising they've got a, you know, you know, a thirty for thirty plan where they're trying to preserve you know thirty percent of the, the forested area, you know, in their in their watershed, you know, for you know for protection, and it, it's something that the uh, you know, federal government's done. The state's talking about it. But I, I wonder if that's something we should be considering for Belgrade to kind of, you know, look at the areas that are, that were largely forested. The uh, Seven Lakes Alliance earlier had kind of done conservation hubs where they, we thought, where they identified areas that were most, you know, precious to to uh, to keep in the natural world, whether it was for the tree growth, watersheds, uh, you know, the wildlife that was there. So I, I, part of our mission, I believe, is going to be to kind of identify how we're going to look at the land again. Uh, in the 214 uh, comprehensive plan, one of the, the the biggest thing that the people voted on when they had a a, po a poll on that, you know, was land was keeping the forested land, keeping it like it is, not losing it. it I don't think it, it didn't describe what to keep. Where, how, or the means? Yes, right. Yeah. It was more like this is our our big goal, and uh, with the increasing development pressure, which I think we're going to see in, in the future, right. it's going to yeah. be how, more do, how do how do other towns accomplish that? I mean, I, several, I know Falmouth, 
uh, Scarborough. They have you know some funds in the town to do it, but they're not they're not the same as you know what the Seven Lakes can you know right, focus on. Then you know you know some one you know their town uh, conservation committee would say, hey, there's a hundred acres here. We'd like to raise the money for that. More like spots, not a not well, a big not a big plan. They're also not town uh, town meeting towns. Right. They have a council, so they can do things a little more. So, like Oakland can do yeah, things. Yeah, right quickly so they can, you know, they can vote it through and it's done and they don't have to wait a year. So I'm just, yeah. yeah. Uh, is, is Excuse me, is there, I, I guess we need to figure out an approach to what lands are sensitive and and might then should be conserved. And is there, an yeah. idea I had is to bring something like it from the Nature Conservancy or some expert. Well, yeah. Well, the town is, if I'm, I, I don't know the details about this, you may know more about this than I do, but the town is paying for some kind of major survey that's being done by um, some sort of GIS system. They, we, it's on the, I, I think it's on the drawing board, but not. Right. Oh, I understand. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was kind of one of the big, big things. The two fourteen plan was to right. how much open space is is left, how much is developed. Yeah. Where is it? Where the the state is 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 mapped all the critical habitats and the whole state. You know, if you want to know where amphibians are, we already have that information accessible to us. So okay. The you know wetlands prioritized. You know in different classes. So. It's just kind of putting that into a, a plan that you know, they give you the information, but as a, a town or a group, you know, how are we, what are we going to do with it? And, and I think that um, KB Cog is going to help us with some of that GIS mapping. It's, yes. it's one, of, one of the plans. I don't think it's, you know, written down yet. It's not going to happen, but I think it's a wish. <laughs> it, it is, and I, I, I think that's now that we have a, a broader mission, you know that should be part of it. You know, I agree. Um, I wonder whether uh, this is just a a thought. I, I wonder whether there's anyone who lives in town and perhaps works at DEP who is who's this this sort of thing might be within their purview. These sorts of issues might be the sort of thing that they deal with on a day to day basis. You know, who might be able to grab, you know, get yeah, Peter Rushton and or, yeah, someone or, like that. Yeah, to kind of give us some guidance. Or, well, I was thinking of joining the committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I would say they live in town, maybe get them someone who really knows about George this. Seal, you know, yeah, right? Yeah, to get them. I don't know yeah. if George did the, the, this sort of thing. No, he was more compliance. Yeah, I think. yeah right. Yeah, he's retired. Yeah, yeah, down Rich Baker. Yeah, so, um. Like, okay, Matt Scott. Matt Scott. He's, he's been retired for many years. Yeah. He's certainly knowledgeable. Yeah, but there's some a lot of historical knowledge on it. Yeah, but yeah, right. Well, he keeps in touch. I mean, he's still active. Yeah. So he knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. but, but I think we're going to need to kind of mm -hmm. look at it. Yeah. Say what is, you know, what's our role going to be? Well, I, I agree. We, we definitely do we need to. We need to broaden. Um, and I think I think we would be helped a lot by you know the right people joining the committee. Exactly. Right? If we need to identify who those people would be. Right, because someone who brings knowledge, yeah, you know, and trust you know, people know, hey, they they've had a, a good history of uh, doing things. Spend a little time deciding what we can't do so we don't waste our time yeah. pursuing something that's not gonna go anywhere. Right. I think okay. some of it we could you know, bring in some of the Seven Lakes Alliance staff and see where they're at. And, and what I see sometimes these as not so much a joint venture, but a collaboration to say, if, if you're looking at his, his Belgrade's uh, land mass of, you know, 27,000 acres, which, which are the most priority ones for, should we look at first and why? Yeah. And then get a pitch to you know, get people to see that. I think we need more research to do with, you know, and so we can get some focus. But sure, I'd be happy to, you know, talk to 
staff there. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Yeah, I'm just great. just to kind of mm -hmm. our time is precious at these meetings, so we have to you know get get prepared for you know, our next steps up here. So I'll make some inquiries on that. Okay, soon and just and just send what I find out. I'll email to you and kind of the gist of it. Okay. This is between meetings. Yeah. So, you, yeah. Who, who did you mention? I didn't catch that. Well, I'm going to you know talk to the uh, Seven Lake staff. Okay. And and talk about. I'll just get with uh, first. I'll just get together with Pete Cal and, and talk about you know here was the hub strategy that they put together back when he, his first role as a uh, you know uh, president of the association uh, of the and uh, the BRCA and see how can we do we're looking at Belgrade specifically not the watershed and what 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 should we be looking at to to try to preserve uh that isn't already or and how would we prioritize that and from that we could see you know how how we're going to do it how we're going to raise the money is that a is that grants from that does it make sense for us at some point to meet with some of the seven LA people and whether gaps we talked about that, what we could do, what they don't do. Yes. I think, I, I think we need a meeting probably just with that. Right. And with objectives kind of put together before it. So we don't come in cold, you know, we, we, we would uh, have some errors identified or the whole town identified as maybe just beginning with the, uh, uh you know the hub plan that still exists uh, hasn't been used that much, but it it, it does factor in. Anytime I'm on the uh, you know the uh, committee in, in the Seven Lakes where we're looking at purchases or easements, the land they all get they all get valued. You know they have a this a this is a high value spot and it's got eight or ten criteria. So maybe they could we could work with them on that in. On, a, on the Belgrade land, so we could, when we go to the public or we go to other people, we've thoroughly looked through it, have reasons why, why it's important, why the priority is there, and then try to get uh, input and uh, backing of the public. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll start that. Okay. Cool. And kind Good of idea. Okay. next, do it next week. The. Uh, Meeting the town offices is going to be closed every Wednesday, beginning in. Oh, right. We could still come here at our okay. usual Wednesday yeah, okay. meeting, yes. Okay, they'll leave, okay. They'll leave the heat on and stuff. If they'll leave the heat on, if, so we don't we don't need to change it unless anybody wants to. Good. Yeah, we'll just leave it at the same. Okay. What, uh, we give you a key to the office? I have one now, yeah. Okay. And I. Code. I do. And you know how to work this device that Mary was helping you with? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest part of the job. <laughs> well, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank no, we you. Don't, we don't have any minutes from last week because it was not a legal meeting, right? That's right. right. It's just informal. Okay. You had an illegal meeting yes. in my absence? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> he said, quick, he's not here. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know, you know, kind of uh, as I get stuff from Seven Lakes on this, on how, how we can look at land here and uh, before our next meeting. Sounds great. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Kimberly, where yeah. are you? I'm in uh, Port Ritchie, Florida. My oh. goodness, where's that? Where that? It's about an hour north of Tampa on the West Coast. Okay, oh, nice. Don't talk to any of the natives down there. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming on today. Absolutely. Thank you all. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.